ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this video is an attempt to do two things at once. One, to try to answer the question of how do I, or what should like really good quantum notes look like? And the second question that I'm trying to answer is maybe how do I clarify some of the stuff we talked about last time we're in class, namely the distance, I'm sorry, the equation, how to find the equation of a circle using the distance formula, which will also include completing the square at the end. So kind of all-inclusive one notes. Now before we begin, I should also, I should, I also want to add this. Um, this should not be the first time you're encountering this material. If this is the first time you're seeing this material, you should probably stop the video right now, go back to the class notes we took in, we had in class, the sage and scribe and those other worksheets we did in class, and come to this last. If this is your first encounter of the material, you're doing it wrong. And the reason that for that is, is the way coral notes are designed to work. This is supposed to be something factual that you had time to process and deal and ask questions about. And then you come here as a final, this is my formal, notes that I'm going to take to me on a quiz or test, which everything I know on this um, piece of paper is written to be correctly, I'm sorry, written correctly and to be factual. And so it's just something to consider that if this is the first time you're hearing it and you hope to simply copy down these notes and have them really useful to you, um, you're going to be a little disappointed. So please don't do that. Please, let's use them the right way. Um, remember, this is a video, so if you have, um, if you have issues with how fast I'm going, pause it, take your time, go back, watch it a couple of times so you have really, really wonderful notes. Without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to talk about the equation of a circle using a distance formula, um, which is, so that means the place we actually have to start is how do we define a circle. Now when I asked this in class, I got a mixed bag of things. Mostly people describe this as a round shape, which ultimately isn't a bad way to think of a circle, but it's not useful in terms of actually doing math uh, with a circle. And so we redefine the circle to be a locus, which is just a fancy word for collection of points equidistant from the center. Now, if we can step back and appreciate this, what we're really saying is that this is what, how you're actually going to generate the formula. The definition itself has to be precise. If you think back to your experience in geometry and how you define polygonal shapes, you had to be precise with what, you, what words you picked. Because if you pick the wrong word, you're either doing way too much in terms of over-defining or you're not being restrictive enough to make sure the shape's coming out the way you want it. And so um, calling this a round shape is not really informative. You're really just classifying it um, based on how you see, or being, excuse me, on what you see. But calling a, a locus of points equidistant to the center is infinitely more useful because just like in geometry, where your definitions told you exactly what you needed to create to make that shape, like, for example, if I said the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral of four 90-degree angles, if you just simply made that, you're guaranteed to have a rectangle. And now, I'm not saying there's not other stuff that's true about a rectangle. Like, for example, opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent. But you don't need all of that. That ends up being just like back-end characteristics versus what you actually need for creation. Um, so if you think about this definition the same way in terms of algebra, if you think about a locus of points equidistant from a center, you've actually told us exactly what we have to generalize. We have to calculate a distance, a radius, uh, the distance from a center out to the circumference that's going to be equidistant all the way around. And so if we think about now what tool we're going to use to do this with, well, we were just told what tool to do it with because we were told the definition was about a distance, which means we're going to be using the distance formula. And so now that we have this good definition of circle, we have a tool which we're going to use um, for this, uh, this generalization to the equation of a circle. Um, all we actually have to do is run a general calculation. And when you think about what it means to generalize, one of the big things is really just showing that the calculation works in a pattern. And so that's how this one's going to work in particular. And so if we can simply use a distance formula to find a radius using variably defined points, so it applies to all numbers at the same time, um, we can actually end up with a nice general circle equation. Um, so that's what we did in class. Let's do it here as well. And so how does one create the equation of circles using distance formula? Well, let's diagram this first. Pictures are always good in mathematics. So let's say we have this circle, perfectly drawn, of course, <laughs> by me. Um, and we need to use a distance formula, which means we need a couple different points. But again, if we reference the definition, it's equidistant from the center of a circle, which tells us that's got to be one of our points. So that's our center. I'm going to call it h comma k. Now again, we're going to keep this variably defined because I don't want to use or say this works for only a couple of examples, but rather all numbers at the same time, hence the use of variables. Now we need another point in the circle. It doesn't really matter which point we pick. It just has to be a point. 
And the reason it doesn't matter is going to make, I'm going to label this point x comma y. Um, to use a distance formula to find the, the distance that's equidistant, um, I have to find two points. This distance I'll define to be r. And now we just actually have to go to our distance formula. And so we have a couple different forms of it. Um, and this one in particular, I think it'll probably make the most sense to use the one that actually has the most expanded form. And so that's going to be the distance between some points. Um, because it says it's a Pythagorean theorem, we can say it's like d squared um, is equal to x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And so we can pull these values directly off of our circle. And so we can say this d squared, um, the x1 minus x2 are your, just your two x values. It doesn't really matter the order. So I'll just write x minus h squared up and define the y value. Um, that's going to be y minus k and squared. And so if you think about the circle's definition, we're, it's just a, a collection of points that are equidistant from the center meaning that if we can find that distance, we should have our equation. Knowing that we're going to distance formula to do it, we've actually accomplished the goal already. It was literally that fast. Um, and we're going to do a little cleanup here for the circle because the d is actually going to be r. So that's going to be r squared because that is a distance we're, which we're trying to find. It's going to be the x minus h squared plus the y minus k squared, where we can tell the r is going to be the radius. And then the center is going to be h comma k. Um, and that's really as fast as it is. Like these tools don't have to be super complex. They just have to be useful. And so using the distance formula, um, knowing that we're just trying to match a definition of a circle, we end up with this for the, for the equation of a circle. Okay. Um, so that means if I have any equation in this form, I should be able to pick out the center and the radius very quickly. Or if I was given an equation of this form, I should be able to graph it since I'll have that equation in radius very, very quickly. Um, let's drop down here and see if we can have some examples. And so let's just uh, generate some really fast. Um, so let's say I want the center and the radius uh, for a circle given to be uh, 36 is equal to um, x plus 4 quantity squared. Um, plus y minus 1 quantity squared. Um, so we don't have to do a lot of work here. We just have to recall the general um, general circle formula, which is r squared is equal to x minus h plus y minus k. And so we just have to pull values. Um, so 36 is definitely going to be my squared radius. And do take notice my squared radius. So if r squared is equal to 36, um, that implies that r is going to be equal to 6. Um, it could be plus or minus 6, but since we're talking radius, which is the distance, we'll keep just positive. Um, the center hk um, is defined to be these two values. Now note in the formula that these are subtraction problems because they're distance. And so this plus 4 actually has to be a minus 4 uh, because negative from the 4, negative from the formula, that's going to give us a positive value. And that, that also means that's going to be a 1. Because again, we're subtracting, therefore it's got to be a 1. And so we have the radius of 6, and we have hk center, negative 4, comma 1. Okay, let's see another one. Uh, so let's do, um, I want the same thing, center and radius. Um, let's make it 7 is equal to x plus uh, 9 quantity squared plus y plus 10 quantity squared. Uh, so the squared radius is going to be 7, which implies the radius itself is equal to the square root of 7. Now, your radius doesn't have to be a whole number. Like, nothing this has to be a whole number. Remember, we generalized it to uh, variably defined points that would apply to all numbers at the same time. So the square root of 7, although it's a rash it is irrational, is a real number, so it's good. Um, the hk, the center again, we're going to pull. Um, being a positive 9, the center actually has to be a negative 9. And plus 10 now becomes minus 10. And so the radius in that case is square root of 7. And the center is at negative 9, comma 10. Um, we can also take a formula and graph it. And so let's say I want you to graph the equation 16 is equal to x squared 
plus y minus 2 quantity squared. Now the first thing you should do is actually pull the important information. The radius in this case shall be 4, um, and the hk center shall be 0, comma 2. Uh, don't get fooled by the fact it's only x squared. That just means it's like x minus 0 squared. Um, ergo, the center is going to be a 0, 2. And so if I wanted to put this on a graph, you have the important information, and so it's just a matter of plotting it. Okay, so we have center at 0, comma 2, and a radius of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4 up here, and 1, 2, 3, 4 down here. And so our, our circle is going to be approximately there. And so again, nothing too tough here. Um, just really the cognitive piece is understanding like where the formula actually comes from, which is just a generalization of the distance formula. I should say an application of distance formula. Um, and then that makes a very useful tool for some skills here. But it also brings up the issue of what happens if I don't give you that circle in that nice form. What do you do? Um, so an example, and of course I'm just making this one up because this would be one for many of the homeworks. Um, let's say I have something like uh, x squared plus y squared uh, plus 6x minus 8y is equal to 4. And so in this form, the circle is very e the cir circle information is very easy to pull. In this form, it's not. Um, but luckily, we can just complete the square. And so completing the square is the process, the precise process, of taking a partially perfect square polynomial, uh, in this case a quadratic, and adding the right constant term to make it a perfect square quadratic. Um, so the note here you should make to yourself is simply to complete the square. Um, so a good first step in completing the square is to start to grouping to start to group some of your numbers together. Um, so I'm going to move the 6x to this side, and then let's see, y squared minus 8y equals 4. And so the idea here is we have to pick the right c term. Um, so we're going to add a number to this, and we're going to add a number to this uh, to make this perfectly factorable. Um, so techniques, there's tons of techniques out there. Um, if you want to use a square method, that's totally fine with me. Um, I should just color code this. And so, like, for your x's, we're going to take the partial quadratic we have, the x squared plus 6x, and break it up so it's going to fit and file into a nice quadratic box. Um, x and x, because that's to create the x squared. Now, whatever comes in these two boxes has to add up to 6x. Um, so that makes our choice pretty obvious. It's got to be plus 3, so it's plus 3x, and plus 3 here, so it's another plus 3x. These numbers have to be the same, otherwise it wouldn't be a perfect square quadratic. And so that number, whatever it is, we're really just having it. Right? Um, now that we know all these three pieces, that leaves our mystery constant right here. But of course, since we know that it's plus 3 and plus 3, this has to be plus 9, which means to make this a perfect square quadratic, we're going to have to add 9 to the left-hand side, which also means we're going to have to add 9 here as well. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a perfect square. Uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be a balanced equation. Excuse me. So this quadratic then, de or then factors into x plus 3 times x plus 3, which further then factors into x plus 3 quantity squared, meaning now we know the x value of our center. We're going to repeat the process for the y. And again, if you want to see kind of the box method, uh, that's totally fine, or if you want to use it, excuse me, that's totally fine with me. Um, if we're soon able to pick up some shortcuts, so you're welcome to do that as well. And so let's take this y squared minus a y and break it up. So it's definitely got to be y and y because I have a y squared term. Um, these two boxes on the corners have to add to make a negative 8y, which means it should be negative 4. So that's negative 4y, and that's negative 4y, which means our mystery constant has got to be plus 16. And so if I add plus 16 to this side, and of course plus 16 to the right side as well, that makes this quadratic uh, factor into y minus 4 times y minus 4, which further factors into y minus 4 quantity squared. On the right-hand side, I now have an addition problem. I have 4 plus 9 plus 16, um, which should just be 29. And so now if I want the center, h comma k, 
Um, that should give me, uh, let's see, negative 3, comma 4. And if I want the radius, um, it should just be the square root of 29. Okay, um, so completing the square is definitely going to be uh, a useful tool for us. Um, this is the kind of tool you bring in when the distance formula, the current tool, just simply isn't enough. Then these other technique com techniques come in. At this point in your math career, you have a ton of techniques, so a big part of your job is going to be combining and picking the right techniques right at the right time, um, or making a new one up by generalizing an idea that you already have. Um, so that's what I have uh, for you guys for these notes. Um, the last part is to help you guys write a conclusion, so don't forget about the conclusion process. So what you should do is reread your notes, highlight or underline three to five keywords or phrases, and then write, you use those keyword or phrases to actually answer the essential question. And so if you kind of recall the process we went through, the whole idea is how to use a distance form to find the equation of a circle. And so the first thing we did is talk about the definition itself. Picking a nice, precise definition tells us directly what algebra we have to do. In the same way that in geometry, by picking a nice definition, it told us exactly what we had to create to make that object. In this case, a circle is defined to be a, a locus or a collection of points equidistant from the center which tells us right now what we have to generalize is the distance um, from the center, i.e. the radius. The tool we use and we end up using with a distance formula, we generalized it before, meaning that it can accept and calculate now with two coordinate pair values instead of a set distance, well, which is very useful because that means we can find any distance um, that's, or, that's not oriented straight up and down or straight left and right, not vertically or horizontally. And so we did that here. The general date, or sorry, the creation of the formula for a circle is actually pretty straightforward. Um, the key here is to make sure that we're using variables, because if we use variables, it applies to all numbers at the same time. And so the center was h comma k. We have the radius as just a general x y. Plugging that directly into the distance formula, and then cleaning up our algebra, we end up with this nice circle equation, which means we can pull directly from it the h and k center, and then the radius since we have r squared. And again, hopefully you're still seeing this is basically the Pythagorean theorem um, evolved two or three times. Um, so we have some examples of how we can actually pull radiuses and centers. Um, there's sometimes an instance where you're not given the equation in really nice form, which just means now we have to bring in a, a different, another technique, in this case completing the square, which brings us back to that very nice form. Guys, that's all I can provide for you so far. If you have additional questions, please let me know. Tell me how I can, what I can do to help you be successful. Um, here's some good examples, some good notes, so please study them and uh, be prepared for your quiz on Friday. Thank you.